Before night falls upon Chicago, we wanted to take this opportunity to thank our champions of the Red Moon. Martin Hoshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, and David for their extremely generous support to the show. Both Yalmer and Craig are now GMing games of Cult Divinity Lost for our high-level patrons, and we're having a fantastic time playing with them. If you want to hear your name read on the show, or join us for a game of cult, check us out on our Patreon and help the Red Moon rise again. Now it is time for the sacrifice. I'll tell you what is not so ideal, Vincent. We have sacrificed a great deal for this. Also, we have somehow let loose a ravening sabbat in our city, who knows all of us and could call by at any point if our sheriff is ineffective at finding him, finding him, finding him, finding him, finding him. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. So I want to know what your plans are. Where are you heading now? What are you up to? You just got the information that Clan the Sombra intends to join the Camarilla. And you saw Sierra being dragged away to an unknown place, um, more or less against her will, by the prince. And the entire kindred society is in a bit of a, a dramatic disarray. Because what does this all mean? Who will decide? What will they need to do to join the Camarilla? If anything, or will they be able to? There are so many questions up in the air and it creates a very thick tension inside of Elysium. So no matter what, you don't you don't really want to be there. Um, there it's, it's a very hostile environment right now. Yeah, it's... Um, it it's kind of strange that she all of a sudden got dragged like that because I, I, I thought they were just gonna have discussions, but maybe that's just uh, to keep us safe from 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 the others. They seem quite upset. So my thoughts now, uh, it, what I'm thinking to myself is that depending on how late it is, maybe maybe there's still time to, you know, not waste time and. Uh, Call this contact at uh, red number five, and which I don't know. See if I could set up a meeting. Uh, probably not tonight. I mean, unless they happen to be available. I, I mean, I'd better. I'll be happy to do something with this night. Then I, I know Dolph mentioned that he he wanted to go to a club as well, uh, but you know, doesn't hurt to to make the call and, and, and see what they say. So um, I step out of the club, and uh, I am a bit surprised to see uh, Dolph coming back. I'm fully intent on hailing a cab and uh, getting myself over to the Backtrack Club as soon as possible. I am possessed with a certain fire, and I express that to the others. Well, we have really no where to start on our hunt for Malenkov, which is apparently going to put a, put us in everyone's good graces, because apparently we lost him, because apparently a grown man vampire is our responsibility. But, based on the way that one Brett Stryker was talking to me during events at Elysium, I have reason to believe that Malenkov may have passed through his little club deep in Chicago, so I will be making my way there. If he isn't there, I will enjoy a, the rest of the night in a place devoid, mainly, of kindred. So Vincent has joined the other two after a short period where he just confirmed he was no longer needed by his sire, she had important things to do and wished him gone now. And having just got back in her good books, he did not wish to press that further. So, he has joined the others and listens to this conversation and says, Well, I suppose you do have a point there. 
Brett Stryker. Yeah, if he knows who's causing the rumor about you, it would indeed make sense to uh, ask him. And it's so much easier to ask questions outside of Elysium. So sure, I'll come and help. Why not? Why not? Yeah, I just uh, like to, to make a call, just to, to follow up on this contact that I was given, just to, uh, to have that done. But did the, did the um, well, the Jackson? Did he want us to? Did he did he want us to look up Malenkov? I, I, I wasn't sure to me. Well, I don't recall the prince saying as much, but the sheriff certainly implied that we had uh, fucked up in some major way. If your conversation doesn't need to be entirely private, you can make it on in the cab ride there. But if you want some time alone, then we can either wait or wait for you. No, no, no. I, I, I can do that in the cab, sure. I mean, I've, uh, I, I parked the car not far from here. If you want me to drive there, I, I, don't, I don't mind. I suppose driving there may be good uh, if we need to make a quick retreat. All right, sure. We've heard of the kind of man that Malenkov is, so... Yes. Yeah. Uh, let, let's let's take your car. All right. It's it's just over here, and I start walking. Before you all move towards the car, um, you are met by Damien, again, who has more or less jogged over to you. Um, and he is... Uh, He's standing there and he's looking at you. He looks a little... He still looks a bit pissed off. Sheriff, you didn't have to come to say goodbye. The band's going to start missing its drummer. I don't need your jokes right now, Dolph. I think you've made enough of a joke of this town already. I'm here to inform you that if you should stumble upon Malenkov, which I uh, recommend that you do, Willfully or not, in order to pay back for all the mess you've made, I suggest or I actually demand that you do not kill him. In any way, do not kill any more kindred in my city again. Of course not. I mean, he, he, we were going to send him here. If, if uh... Yeah, that's not a natural thing for you to do. It's not... Uh, and of course not thing. It is a demand because I cannot trust you. I have no idea why Jackson chose you since you are apparently incapable of doing anything without murdering very important or at least um, dangerous kindred in the city. So I recommend that you do not kill Malenkov. You bring him back here for us to determine what will happen with him. Unless the prince tells you otherwise, which has always been the rules of this city and the Camarilla. We, we read you loud and clear, Sheriff. Uh, we absolutely respect your word. And we completely see that the prince selected us, an art critic, a male model and a jazz musician to escort two of the most dangerous kindred that have ever entered this city. It may, makes perfect sense, and we will do our best. We will wear kid gloves, and while we do this, I, I think, I cannot think of a better role for the sheriff than to continue playing music. Now no, listen, I, I, I just want to ask, you want, you want us to bring him here, if, if we find him, and if he resists, what, what do you suggest we do? You stake him. It's very simple. And Adolf, I'm doing my job as a sheriff. My job as a sheriff is to delegate tasks in this city right now because, as you maybe can see, the entire kindred society is in disarray. And I might be a very good sheriff, but I can't handle everyone being incredibly uppity and upset about this news that came as a surprise to us. Mm. So you can use your sarcasm all you want. This is my city. This is Jackson's rules. If you don't like it, you can take the next bus out of here. I don't give a shit. But if you stumble upon Malenkov, you bring him here. The prince chose you as vampires, not as art critics, not as 
jazz musicians, not as models who chose you as vampires. Because you are part of the kindred society and you have responsibility to obey the prince's order. Is that clear? Crystal. Thank you. Just checking, when you say bring here, you mean succubus? Yes. Where the oh, prince right. is currently situated. And, 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 and we, we in, 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 if push comes to shove, you, you say we, 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 we stake him. You stake him. Uh, and, Immobilize and, him. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and you, I, I got that. I, I, I get, you immobilize someone, put in a stake for that. I, I, I get all that. Thanks, thanks very much. But uh, where do we get um, a s- stake? A stake? Uh, you break off the leg of a chair and you pierce it through the heart of a vampire. That's how you stake someone. Oh. Well, that's, that's all I... My, I gotta ask then. It's a very refined process, Alan. They've been uh, working on it for centuries. Okay, I... let, let's go, shall we? Uh, we? We understand your message, Sheriff. Have a pleasant rest of your evening. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> see, see, you, see you later. Good evening, Sheriff. He <sighs> turns around and walks away. Well, that's a little depressing, but I suppose, in a way, that actually makes things maybe a bit easier. There you go, Dolph. We can, uh, if Malenkov is the fellow who I'm pretty sure is the one spreading rumors about you, he's now... I guess that makes the task official anyway. So, it's what we gotta do. We gotta bring him back. Um, that sheriff is a jumped up little shit, isn't he? I open the car door and, and get into the... Driver's seat. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I guess we made a mess. I do admit that it is a little annoying that he keeps on going on about how important Genghis was. He wasn't important. He was a bloody anarch. But I believe that might be because I believe the sheriff himself, I think, used to be one of them as well. I'm not entirely sure about that rumor. Well, important for the balance, I guess. You know, not not as a person. What do you mean? Uh, just to keep the balance in the city, to keep you know people from starting to riot and all that. It's all politics, isn't it? That's true. That's true. But sometimes, uh, you know, I mean, really, that Genghis had it coming. I mean, you saw the whole thing that started this thing and made Dolph so angry. He should have been getting punished for that very incident immediately instead of the oh no we can't punish him that is true uh, as much as i often disagree with vincent if the sheriff had actually handled genghis when he breached the masquerade in your club alan none of this would have happened yeah i get that i i thought it was strange too that you know they couldn't even incarcerate him or something i don't i don't know maybe Some stick a chair of... leg through his heart i understand that's how dracula was was done in <laughs> the official way yes <laughs> <laughs> i turn on the ignition are you guys coming or what yes. of course yes yes let's let's go the night is still young after all all right so, where are you going? You're going to the Backtrack Club? Yes. Yep, that's where we're going. And uh, as we go along, I'm, I'm going to make a call to uh, my contact that I got at uh, red number five. Okay. You were calling the person on the card you got? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And I, uh, as it starts to uh, sort of come through, uh, I look over at... Um, Vincent and I ask, what was the name of her again? The the, the primogen? That would be Annabelle. Miss Annabelle. Miss, Miss Annabelle? Yes, Torridor primogen. You do know what primogen are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you told me. Yes, I... yes, yes, yes. That's right. Big, especially in this case, the Torridor, you can imagine. As much as I dislike it, they like to think they know everything when it comes to music, art. Culture, culture, culture. You know. Old, old as a, as a motherfucker, as I believe someone said. Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, yeah. Hello, um, my name is uh, Alan Smythe Winners. I was given this number by uh, Miss Annabelle. Uh, yeah, listen, dude. I This is... Uh, you're calling at a really 
a really bad time right now. Um, sure. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't put that there. Put that over. No, 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 no. No, no, the other way around. No, don't. Sorry, just give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. The broken glass. Put that over there. Yeah, just cover the blood up. Sorry. Uh, who? What did you say again? Uh, what was that? You having trouble at the club? Uh, we had someone visit who tore everything apart. Um, Can you describe this someone to me? Excuse me, who are you? My name is Alan Smythe Winners. I'm a close uh, contact of uh, Miss Annabelle. Uh, this is... Uh, I was given uh, this number because uh, she might have an assignment for me at the club. Uh, I'm a pianist, but I'm also capable of doing other things. But we're working on uh, behalf of the sheriff right now, and if there's something that... Well, Jesus Christ, there's us. a lot of information. Uh, yeah, as I said, we uh, like some fucking lunatic came in here, tore everything up. Uh, he fucking staked me. Uh, I'm alright now, but it's been a shitty Russian night. fella? He's, Beard? He spoke some language I didn't understand. Might be Russian, I don't fucking know. I describe uh, to my best ability Malenkov to him. Uh, that's pretty much the guy, yeah. And where is he now? I don't know. He stormed off. We gotta find him, you see. Um, did you leave anything behind? or did, any, did anyone around hear a notion of where he was going? I don't know. He came in with two dudes and they're still here. How long ago was this? <sighs> Half an hour, maybe. I uh, sort of... Hang on. I told the other guys. Malenkov just busted up the red number five. Half an hour ago. Hmm. Well, in that case, we're going there. I suppose. Well, we could go to the. Yeah, we should probably go to the red number five then, uh, as that's likely the most recent place. If he was only there thirty minutes ago, we may still be able to pick up a trail. Yeah, if we... that's true. Again, uh, let's stop by and just have a little investigate then. Yeah. Um, listen, we um, we're very keen to get our hands on this individual as well. He needs to be brought to uh, a person of importance as quick as possible. So we're going to come and drop by. All right. Uh, Appreciate any cooperation that you could give us. Yeah, that sounds great. It's good. Yeah. Right. See ya. Yeah. Bye. Well. Well, there, there you go, Alan. You are not only serving the sheriff, you may also get a job out of it at the same time. <laughs> I doubt they're gonna start negotiating just, you know, concerts in a, a time when this guy got staked. You know, Malenka fucking staked him. And they tore up the place, blood all over, and he was there with two guys, he said. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know that much about the Sabbat, but that sounds like the sort of thing my sire said about them. All lunatics should have known. Yeah, it's the deal. He, he comes to our city uh, on some diplomatic mission. This is how he starts off. Well, you know, Alan, there are plenty of people in this world who don't give a damn. And I sort of look to Dolph. I look to Alan again, I look to Dolph, as I say that. Well, <sighs> well shall we be I, off I, then, I, Alan? I uh, sort of uh, reroute as we go to start heading towards red number five instead. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, he's going somewhere else. He could be going to the backtrack, but I, I don't know if, if you think there's any likelihood that that's where we want to go, then uh, I said we could just go to this place to, I mean, try to pick up some kind of track. Well, exactly. Even if he was at the backtrack far earlier this evening, if he's since jumped the red number five, yeah, uh, we're gonna like, more likely to pick up some kind of fresh lead here. And are you guys good with, I don't know what kind of powers you have, if you, can you see tracks in some kind of way? I don't know if that's a thing. No. I believe uh, I've heard that there's one or two folks who could do that, but uh, no, I, I'm afraid I need to use my regular senses for that sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair enough. What about you? You are quite secretive about your skills, other than the, uh, <laughs> uh, your bugs. Yeah, it might come in handy just now. 
Or a dog, if we can find one in the area. Help me sniff this guy out. Hmm. Alright then, well, drive on, drive on. And as he drives on, I very quickly send a little message through my pager to Messenger, telling her, good work, you're getting a raise. And then very quickly to Teller, telling him, update, question mark. You don't get a re- reply, um, hmm. just yet. Um, okay, so it doesn't take long for you to get to red number five. Um, normally, in front of red number five, there's a long queue. Uh, it is one of um, the biggest clubs in the town, which is kind of weird since it's it's considered kind of an uh, a, an outsider place. It's not some, it's not a common place for people to go. But a lot of tourists actually travel to Chicago to see red number five. It is a place where uh, a lot of hip-hop, jazz, alternative music is played. One of the only places in town where there is a scene for that. But tonight, it it's completely empty outside. It looks like there has been a lot of people, as there usually is at night. There is beer, beer bottles scattered around, uh, cigarette butts, um, some, of, some cigarettes still lit. Um, but... Now it's it's just desolate. There's no one, um, except for a shadow standing in the doorway of the club, seemingly smoking a cigarette. This a small smoke um, stream of smoke coming from him, and you can see the glow of the cigarette in the dark. But that's kind of all you can see. Hmm. Well, I get out of the vehicle, look to the others, and. Uh walk over to the entrance going good evening uh, the the club is the club is closed oh that's all right we're here on a business what we're expected we're expected oh are you the you don't sound like the guy from the phone well it's not just him is it there's a few of us and i gesture to the others yes, so i see I don't want to bid you welcome to the club because there's nothing to welcome you to right now, as you can see. He pushes a, a table leg that's lying in front of him, kind of nonchalantly, and shrugs. Um, he points to his torso that is full of blood. He doesn't seem like he cares. He's not wearing a shirt anymore either. Uh, I'm Bennett. Bennett Stepman. I... I guess I used to own a manager's club. I guess I still do. I don't fucking know anymore. Welcome. Well, Bennett, I would really recommend getting out of the street. The sheriff is very hot on uh, masquerade breaches right now, and given your chest wound, you look a fairly, a fair bit conspicuous. <laughs> the sheriff. <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh, believe me, I share your view, and yet that doesn't mean he won't punish you. No, no, I guess not. But you know, you know when you reach a point in your evening where you just kind of like, I welcome death. No. Have you seen my club? I guess you haven't, but. No, please show us in. Let us be the judge of whether you deserve death. <sighs> yeah. Please enter. He gestures. As we come out of the car, I blocked it and I came up a little bit behind the rest. And uh, as they finished the conversation there with Bennett on the outside, I. Before I go in, I uh, hesitate for a bit, then I look back out, and uh, I start calling out dogs. I stand there, and I close my eyes, and I focus, and I try to reach out mentally to any dogs that would be in the area. Well, it doesn't take long before uh, two dogs come up running up to you. They're definitely street dogs, um, definitely not used to humans, but they seem quite comfortable around you. Uh, they place themselves in front of you. One of them is a larger dog. They're both mixed breeds. You can't really determine what breed they are. Um, and the other one is a little smaller. Hmm. Hello there, fellas. It's good to see you. And I uh, reach out to uh, to let them sniff me. Um, I got a question for you guys. And I kneel down before them. Have any of you... Uh, were you here when this commotion happened? Did you hear? 
The bar. Did you hear the sound? Loud sound. You hear it? Uh, they both bark. Hmm. And then someone ran out of here. Probably quickly. Did you see someone run out of here? One of them barks. The larger door barks. And seems excited. You got it sent? You got that person sent? It barks again. Hmm. I'd like you to try and track it down for me, if possible. Uh, see, see where it say where it went, and then you can come back here and, and and lead me. Would that be possible? Could you do that for me, please? And I think I need to roll a test, trying to give them orders. Yes, you do. Manipulation plus animalism. Mm -hmm. I got two zeros, a nine, and a seven. And it, it can't really answer you, but it licks your hand. Yeah, that's good. Good boy. Good boy. And I uh, take out some uh, treats from my pocket because I always have them with me and I give that to him. So, so you know, go, go and, and see if you can catch the, the, the track and, and where they're headed and, and, uh, and then come back to me, all right? It starts jogging off around the area, sniffing around. And then after I've done that... Um, I uh, follow the other ones into the club. As you walk in, uh, some of you have been to red number five before. It's not exactly the prim of hygiene. It's not exactly the prim of um, interior design, but it is definitely a place that is welcoming and there's always a bus of people in there. But tonight it's just, there are a few bartenders standing at the corner of the bar talking. A couple of them look very distressed. Um, there is two guys sitting at the corner of the bar. Uh, they don't seem to be talking, but they look over at you. And you can immediately see that those were the two guys that Malenkov arrived with. Um, and there is scattered shadow glass scattered everywhere on the floor. Uh, tables collapse, there are chairs that looks like they've been thrown to the wall. It, it It's a complete mess in there. There are blood splatter on the walls, everything is ruined, trashed. I am looking around this scene of carnage. I take a moment to remove those silly little black shades I always wear when we're outside, put it in my coat pocket. I look around and I look to Bennett. And I say, so, okay, this is quite a, what the hell actually happened? What did you see happen? How the hell did this guy cause all this? What did he do? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Everything went on, everything went on so fast. Um, he came in here and he asked for some obscure Russian drink. You did mention he was Russian, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he wanted some drink and he asked for, well, uh, to buy more than just uh, alcohol, uh, drugs, and, or at least, uh, well, drugged uh, humans. Um, and he wanted to buy sexual favors as well and that's not something we do in here uh, so when I told him that first of all we did not have that drink second of all we condemn drugs um, and third of all we do not prostitute anyone um, he became very upset he uh, threw a chair across the room it hit one of my bartenders as you can see over there um, he um, Threw a large fit, um, began ripping down glasses from the shelves over there, and in the very end, just tilting the shelf over. He attacked several of our guests. Uh, actually, he <laughs> fat upon one of our guests in the middle of the bar and threw the corpse over there. He is still over there, um, very much dead. And yeah, what I'm trying to say is I don't have a club anymore. So wait, 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 wait. Uh, I, I looked it off back at Bennett. 
So what happened to the mortals? Like, what they've just all, you just said, get out of here, they've all run. Who saw him murdering someone? Are the police coming? Have you told the sheriff? I come up and uh, I get into the conversation at this point. I, first of all, there is no way that I could control the horde of mortals that was in here. I was trying to save my staff, first of all. I was trying to save people. Second of all, uh, he killed one of the doormen. Uh, so we had we have limited staff. Uh, third of all, yes, I have contacted Damien. And he seemed like he had more busy things to do, as he always does. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yes, he is very busy performing right now. Oh, I see. <laughs> um... But yeah, I told him, and he said that he would bring it on to the prince, and that's it. I have not contacted the mortal police, why in the world would I do that? Well, because you have a mortal dead body, what have you done with that? It's a window corner. Still. <laughs> no one gonna say something? I mean, the, the, the mortals you say, the, the horde that stormed out, no one's calling the cops. I don't know. I haven't seen them arrive yet. Well, I, I, I guess that doesn't really matter. I mean, guys, uh, we got to find out where, where we went. Hmm. Yes, how are you doing with your uh, Dr. Doolittle? <laughs> I, I, I found uh, some assets outside. <laughs> they, they, uh, one of them has a track, so we, we, we could start following him if we want to. Well, yes, so we could do that. Uh, we've also got his two servants, I see. They're still lingering around the bar. I'm amazed that Mr. Stedman hasn't done something about them. Uh, well, but... I was staked for a very brief moment. I'm recuperating myself, if that's okay. Where are the rest of your kindred staff? It's not just you on the night shift tonight, was it? No, um, but as I explained, he... Uh killed one of my staff members and threw a chair in the head of the other, so... He killed one of them? Oh, he's... Okay, well, that's, uh... Ooh, okay. He's racking up the crimes there. Hmm. I, I look outside. He's probably gonna be back in a, a bit, so, so yeah, let, let's talk to him then. You guys wanna do that? Talk to who? Yes, I'll go and speak to these two, uh... The two Russians. Oh, yes, the ghouls, yes. Uh, I don't believe we were introduced properly. I walk over to them at the bar. Obviously, we shared a car ride together, uh, but I don't think we ever exchanged names. Can you speak English? They do not respond. They just eye you. They seem like they've been beaten up a bit themselves, actually, now that you look at them. Let's try that again. Do you speak English? A bit. A bit. Fine. Why didn't you follow your master out? What are you doing here? No one's holding you here. We are not allowed to leave, according to the owner. And you obey the owner above your own master. That's fine, you know, I'm not, not disparaging that. It just seems quite unusual. So... We do not have a choice in the matter. Ah, I see. So he's done something to you. Uh, right, I understand. Well, I guess sucks to be you two. And do you know where your master might be going next? Why are you asking? Because we need to find him. We cannot betray our master. We can just... I don't intend for you to have to betray him. We need to make sure that no harm comes to him, because eventually the entire city will be arrayed against him. It doesn't matter how long his beard is or how sharp his nails are, he will be taken down. So while he is still an honoured guest in this city, let us let us treat him as such. Where do you think he is going? Would you like to use an ability on this? I'm going to attempt to awe them with my presence. Okay. And you are trying to convince two people at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that is one added difficulty. Fair enough. I roll two successes. Okay. That is not enough to persuade both of them, but it's enough to persuade one of them. Tell me, where do you think your master would have gone? Um... Are you sure you... 
you are going to protect them and not... I, I've not heard of anyone wanting to protect our master before. Well, as you may have picked up, he is a very important person, otherwise he wouldn't have had an entourage meet him. We still think he is an important person, therefore we want to keep him safe. This is literally his only chance of being kept safe. So if you care about your master, you need us to do the work. Where is he? Well... He he goes a little quiet. He looks over at his friend. Uh, the friend is definitely the leader, or the one with the authority. And he just shakes his head. He looks back at you. Uh, I. Uh, he he just said that he he would head to uh, another another club in the city. Another club. One that offers uh, such things that he desired. Just a mild intervention, uh, Dolph. Mm. Do both of you know where he is? I know you're not telling us, but do you think you actually know? Who are you? Does it really matter? I'm a friend. Sidekick. Sidekick, yes. Right. Oh. So do you know where he is? Or not? Why would we tell you? You can tell me yes, and then you still don't actually need to tell me. Do you have money? Oh. <laughs> Listen, you... You lovely pair. You've come all this way to America, to the Windy City, and... You really aren't helping us, and that means you're not helping your master. You're telling me he has gone to another club, a club that offers sex workers by the sounds of it. That sounds like the kind of thing he's interested in, sex workers and drugs. And as the Red Number 5 doesn't offer that kind of thing, we have a handful of other clubs that probably do. But as I am not terribly familiar with where sex workers operate out of in Chicago, it's not really my scene, I need a little more advice. Do you know the club in question? No. No. Okay. Well, I will leave you to the mercies of Bennett Stedman and hopefully... Unless you have money. So you do know. Oh. Ah, uh, Vincent, you shown that side of you too much for these people. That's true. And I just sort of set, go towards the individual. I lock eyes with him and I say, and to be honest, I'm getting tired, so tell us where your master has gone. And I mesmerize this individual. Okay, you need to make a roll. I actually pass my rouse check. Good for you. Two successes. I will not tell you anything. You can give me money, or you can get the hell out of my face. <laughs> we don't know anything. Funny, isn't it, how the power of Vitae is clearly not quite as alluring to you as the power of the almighty dollar. Well, I suggest that you keep begging, because we're not going to pay you a damn cent. Good luck finding him. Well, well, we have other means, don't we, Alan? Uh, yeah. And I look uh, towards the outside to see if the dog's back. Uh, you can hear a faint bark outside, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we, sh we should go. Yes. Well, have a pleasant evening, you two. And we do hope Bennett Stedman, when he's recovered his strength, isn't too homicidal around you. But bear in mind, I can officially say now, the two of you are not under the protection of anyone in this city. Your names have never entered into any conversation. So if you don't survive tonight, no one will care. That's a big statement from someone who doesn't know us. Oh, we know where you are. I sort of simmer for a few seconds, looking at this uh, individual. But I suppose they must be quite strong-willed, the ghoul. Very well, you can keep your information. Let's follow the dogs. Oh, and also Mr. Stedman, Mr. Stedman. Uh, yeah, yeah. My advice to you would be uh, wait for the sheriff, keep them here, and get ready to tell a really good story about when the police do eventually arrive. 
because they will have to arrive eventually, probably on the sheriff's behest, how a crazy guy with high on drugs murdered someone in your club. To be honest, I think you can spin that and your club will be fine. Sometimes a dangerous club, you know, it's got a bit of a lure, but definitely get more security next time, I feel. You know what, Neonade? I don't need your advice. This isn't the first time someone has been murdered in my club. Well, there you- Scram. There's no need to be rude. Scram. Fine, fine. My goodness, I say to Dov, why is it everyone? Everyone, you just try and give some advice, and they're like, scram, get out of here, fuck off, no help for you. It does appear that the uh, kindred in this city are almost to a, to a man or woman, assholes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess you get tired of hearing some things over and over after a while. I say, sort of distracted as I go out, uh, opening the door to see what's going on. Well, the good news is, despite Sheriff Damien's protestations, the war that in there is still his job. But yes, Alan, you're, uh, what are you doing? Let's, let's do what you're doing. Yeah, I think one of these fellows might have caught a scent. Let's see. And I go over and I say, what do you find? You, 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 you got a track? You... You want to it? And the dog is it looks very excited. It looks like it has something for you when it walks over towards you with something in its mouth. Hey, what's You can't really see what it is. What's that you got there? And I uh, kneel down. Come over, let me see. He drops a ring in your hand. And it very much looked like one of Melancholf's many, many rings that he had on his fingers. Mm-hmm. Why would we drop something like this? Where would you find this? Can you lead us along? Come on, guys. I think we, I, and I hand this ring over to uh, the, whoever's closest. I t- take the ring, and I just for a moment... I look it over. Is there anything unusual about this ring? Or does it just look like a standard gold or silver or bronze ring? Or what sort of ring is it? Well, you do have a bit of experience with uh, determining the price of jewelry. Um, Coming from your art business, you've seen quite a bit of antique jewelry, and this is definitely very unique. It's something you haven't seen before. It's very Midland Europe. Um, it is very old, and it's absolutely gold, and it has a, a stone inside a gem that you think might be an emerald. Very big one. I'm going to put that ring in my pocket. If you're not doing it subtly, I will give you a nod and say, well, you know. You have lost a lot of money over the last couple of nights, Vincent. I don't begrudge you making it back. Well, the way I see it, he lost it, and also at the rate he's going, he's a frigging masquerade breach walking, so, you know, I'm sure he won't miss something for long. Exactly. Right, lead on, lead on, Alan, lead on. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, let's follow Lassie. And uh, I, I don't say much to them because I'm very focused on the dog right now and what it's, uh, where it's taking me. Well, it's just trotting along. It seems like it's very determined that it knows where it's going. And you actually walk for quite a while. Uh, you're walking towards the inner city. Um, do any of you have any conversations while we're walking? Anything you want to talk about? Because it, it'll take a little while. You're walking there. I think I will mention to Dolph. So one thing. Mm. The way this is going, it might be wise to find some wood. <laughs> Specifically wood sturdy enough to jam through someone's chest. Oh. Uh, yes. The way this is going, I'm starting to feel asking him politely to accompany us isn't going to happen if he simply walks away, we're in trouble, so the only alternative might be to, well, incapacitate him. And I have a feeling that if we don't do it very quickly, we might, well, you saw the, the, no, you saw the nightclub. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, Well, are, are we walking, are we walking by anywhere residential right now? Or anywhere, indeed, with railings or fence. Yeah, you you are walking. You're kind of in the innermost suburbs. Well, in that case, let's not go for chair legs and branches that have just fallen off because presumably they'll be rotting. Let's try and 
pull free some of these railings and we can use those like spears. Maybe if we've all got one, one of us might stand a chance of hitting his heart. Hmm, that sounds wise enough. All right. Uh, I start looking out for any any areas where that that sort of fencing would look quite old, quite rusty, maybe. Yeah, if we're, all of us put our backs into it, we should be able to pry an iron railing off at least, you know, one or two. Yeah, there is seven. There's a lot of fences to choose from, and you are in quite a uh, low class part of um, Chicago, so it's not very well kept. Wonderful. In that case, I I will pull one off. I will uh, pass it to Alan. Uh, I will take one for myself and let Vincent get his own. I swallow as I take it in my hand. And I, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, of course. It's. Uh, Doesn't it make you feel ridiculous, though, Alan? I I don't know. It makes me feel a bit unsettled. You know, I have you guys done this before? No, no. (laughs) But this is increasingly ludicrous. True, uh, but who are they sending to do this? (laughs) Well, it might be the only way, Alan. One thing I have been told, and I definitely know: if you get the opportunity, do not hesitate. Right. Yeah, yeah. You get well, it. You need to go because otherwise he is going to be pissed, and he will definitely do it to you. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't doubt that this guy is very capable. So um, we better we better be focused when it when it comes to it. But shit, at least he doesn't have the two guys with him. Exactly. That yes, he is uh, just one vampire. How could he stand a chance against three hardened warriors such as ourselves? Well, you say that, uh, Mr. Dolph, but, uh, well, you did do something to Genghis. It was actually quite impressive. Well, do you know, uh, you, you know, you knew a fair bit about him before we met him. Do you, do you, do you know what he does? Do you know how he fights or anything like that? I, I didn't know anything other than what we were told. He just had some kind of reputation as a, as some kind of general... You seem to know a fair bit of things. You you you, you said something about mommy issues. I, did, I remember that, and he was looking at you mighty fiercely, like like you know something. Yes, of course. One of my clan mates, very rare for me to use that term, uh, informed me that he was some kind of Siberian general or warlord or something like that. I honestly have no idea how old he actually is, other than the fact that he was a member of a sect not our own and he had quite the reputation for uh, tearing people apart Uh, now i have not been schooled in how he does it and whether he generally employs other people to do it for him but alan i put my hand on your shoulder although we're following the dog just make sure you stay at the back you know, there's no need for you to put your head in the lion's jaws. I kind of relax as he says that a bit. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that, that's probably for the best. <laughs> it's like, a, you know, I can't, I can't help feeling that like if I'm coming up with this to him and I sort of pat my jacket behind which I have the stake, if I come up with this to him, I get the feeling I'm just arming him rather than you know, having a weapon myself. Well, he can't take three of them at once. Yeah, we we just gotta be be quick and, and do that. Not to mention, I'm not saying that diplomacy is dead straight away. I'm just saying it seems best to prepare for both. Oh, I'm thinking diplomacy is dead straight away. Well, I, I don't see the point in, in questioning him. We could get him outside and lose him again. I suggest we find out where he is, try some kind of ambush and resolve it as quickly as possible. We have no loyalty to this man, so let's just... Let's just deal with this swiftly. And that poses less risk to us. We know the kinds of powers we can wield by locking eyes with someone or speaking honeyed words. We don't know what this person is capable of. So talking to him, I think, is probably a bad idea. 
Yeah, it's just what I was thinking, man. That's what, what I was wondering, you know. I wonder what kind of, I don't know, what kind of powers, what kind of things that he does, you know. I'm afraid all I would be able to say is that I, his clan are known for not being team players, at least of our lot, and they have some unusual abilities that aren't oh. the ones you would be used to. But what those are, I've not seen myself. Well, I'll, 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 I'll try to... I'll stick to the shadows. I'll, I'll see what I can do, you know. Uh, yeah. But, uh... Crap, you know, this place all messed up. Just... Just I, like me, you know, just getting a new contact, new new place where I could work, and there's there's that going to shambles, you know. It's like he doesn't have a club anymore. He'll be fine. Mass over dramatization, like he said to me. There's plenty of murders there before. It was funny that you know he said like, oh, uh, I don't have a club anymore, and then he says like, it's not the first time someone's been murdered. Maybe it's the first time someone's been murdered in plain view of everyone attending. Still, I'm sure if he's looking for a loan or for someone to blame, Vincent can open up his uh, checkbook again. <laughs> you can become an, uh, become an investor for Red Number 5, Vincent. Well, well, I'm pretty sure actually I could indeed invest, as I do invest in several things, though. Something tells me I, he doesn't want help from the neonate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is that, you know. <laughs> All right, so... You are just about um, entering the city again. And um, although you're still in the outskirts, you can definitely feel like more and more people are on the street. Uh, they are looking at you as you walk along in a group, all wielding uh, what is, what was it, a, a, a metal fence? Yeah, well, I, I, I've got money inside my... Uh, uh inside of my jacket. I kind of hold mine a little, like, as if it was, like, some sort of cane, and I kind of just, you know, have it in my hand like that. Okay. And what about you, Dolph? How do you uh, intend to conceal or kind of conceal your weapon? Well, I'm dressed in a very formal, well, as we know, a very glamorous tonic suit. Uh, It's not really well equipped for the concealment of a railing, uh, so I will use it like a cane and it's not subtle but I don't intend to be the person rushing Malenkov uh, I can if we get, catch sight of him I'll keep it behind me until he's close as far as I'm concerned Vincent can deal with him well you see in the distance that a couple of police cars are parked at the side of the road and there are a couple of officers just hanging around the cars talking are you going to walk past him with your canes, or what are you going to do? I would look to Alan and say, maybe your dogs can take us a little roundabout route. Um, yeah. Unless you, you know, you want to use your smooth talking and, and see if you uh, can get some more information. You know, what's... what's what. <sighs> The situation we are in tonight, I would rather avoid police if we can. My abilities are best used when we have to use them on the police, as opposed to just going up to them. And there is two, it's a patrol car. Patrol cars, they might, you know, recognize some of us. Let's, let's, let's avoid the police. Let's, let's avoid the police. That's my input. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey. And I uh, talk to the dog. You're gonna gonna take a little detour, okay? Gonna go around here. The dog looks at you like it doesn't understand. It's kind of tilting its head, looking up at you. Come, come. This way around. We, it's that way, right? It, which way did he go? Which way is the scent? It, it doesn't move. It starts barking a bit. Like, it doesn't understand why you're not following the route that it has. Oh, fuck it. Uh, you guys can move around. I'm, I'm gonna go... Th- I'm just gonna put this here and I throw the uh, bit of railing or whatever it was you know on the side of the street in a, a garden or whatever and then, and then I I just follow the dog you get rid of it yeah okay so you you continue onwards and what does Dolph and Vincent do I will try and find a 
back street to just sort of eventually meet up where I assume he's going, but just so we avoid the police. Yeah, I'm just going to hang around on the street. Uh, if uh, those two are patrolling, I'm going to hang back and see what happens. Okay, so you're waiting behind. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Yama, let's take you first. Yeah. You are essentially walking past him with a dog in front of you. Yeah. One of the police officers stops you and says, Hey, uh, sorry, uh, sir, is that your dog? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not technically my dog, actually. It, 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 it grabbed, it, it just started barking at me and, and wanted me to follow it. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm an animal person and I just do these things. <laughs> Something happened here? No, um, but we do have uh, some rules in this area where you do need to have your dog on a leash. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, it's, it's, it's not my dog. Uh, I'm not sure what you would want of me. So it's a street dog? Yeah, it, like I said, it barked at me and I, I followed it. I, sorry, I'm a little bit of a weirdo that way. <laughs> we understand, but we do need to call uh, an animal control because we cannot have stray animals in this area. They are oh, yeah, yeah, full yeah. of disease. Uh, you understand, it's a protective measure. I, 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 I understand that. Um, would you... Would you like me to, to take it to someone like that? I mean, I, I do handle dogs a fair bit, you know, from time to time. I've, I've, had, um, I've taken care of some, you know, that... I, 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 I know a few of the, uh, the animal handlers in the city. Okay, I need you to make a role on this. Yeah. You decide, you, you combine your own role after what you think is appropriate. Yeah. Um, let's uh, say I'm using subterfuge. Because uh, it's not completely true. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Manipulation, I guess. Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting quite hungry because I, I gain one hunger when I call the dogs. So I've got three hunger dice. Mm -hmm. uh, um. That is uh, three successes and a one on one of the hunger dice. Okay, so um, you're getting a bit annoyed with this police officer because how dare he first of all tell you that the dog who's helping you is to see is full of disease. He obviously doesn't care for animals at all. Is he even does he even deserve living? If he uh, hates animals this much, you you, keep, you you actually start to spiral a bit and get these unrational thoughts about, uh, these angry thoughts about this officer. Um, and you, as you're standing there, you, you, you try to convince him in a, in a gentle manner, but it just comes out very aggressive. And you don't know why. It, it's, it's almost like the beast just for a brief moment just takes over and you almost yell at him. The officer steps back. Whoa, 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 whoa! Listen, listen. We don't want any trouble here. Uh, I'm, I'm 30 minutes off before I can go home. Just take it easy, man. Yeah. And I try to, I, I try to, whew, I try to, I try to come back to myself. But yeah, it's, it's just, you know, this, this perfectly friendly dog was, 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 was trying to help me. I don't know. I, I just wanted to help it. Okay. Uh, I, I. It, it wanted it wanted me to show it wanted to show me something so I'm just thinking that something has happened you know it, it, it seems like something that this dog wants to help something I'm really good with animals okay okay yeah, yeah that's fine just don't you know yelling is not the answer just don't do that I, I know I know sir I, I'm, I'm so sorry officer I I, I I I'll compose myself sorry I, I get very passionate you take about these the mod um, to I will do yeah. that I will. I will do. I will. I will take it uh, to, to the proper authority. And if uh, I and catch uh, you with that dog again, we're gonna have another conversation. And uh, I feel still my 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 blood is pumping because I, I sincerely feel that this this lovely dog is trying to help us. And how dare he say such things? All right. Carry on. And um, 
Dolph, you see this going on. You are keeping an eye on him, and you see him stopping up and talking to the officer, as you might have expected. But then you see him yelling at him, uh, which is very unlike Alan. Hmm. I'm tempted to approach, but at the same time I'm holding a weapon, and I don't really want to get involved with the police. Uh, Alan is my friend, isn't he? Or I've certainly tried to befriend Alan. Do I want him to get in trouble? Well, no, obviously not. But do I want to get myself in trouble? These are the thoughts going through my head right now. No. I have confidence in his abilities. I know that he will be able to handle the situation. And I will stay back. I think, yes. I will, I'll let this situation resolve itself. Alright. And Vincent, you have made your way around the building. Um, mm. And you're kind of halfway there. Is there anything you want to do before you get around? Hmm. No, not yet. I think I just sort of steadily make my way there, assuming that Alan can handle himself. There shouldn't have been any problems. And I will arrive, waiting for the others to eventually come to me. So the only one one person missing right now is you, Dolph. You haven't made it past anything yet. So what are you going to do? Well, with the police being tied up, uh, is, is the dog still marching on or does Alan have hold of it? I'm guessing that, Alan, are you waiting? As the police uh, man decides to let me pass, I... Uh, I collect myself and I see that the dog is probably sort of looking at me expectantly so it's, it's fine I say so it, let's, let's, let's keep going and, and I'll get you some help later well in that case if Alan is making a move I will follow along in the same direction as he is but on the other side of the street okay so you don't really catch their attention uh They seem to be keeping an eye on Alan right now. And the dog. So you pass by without much notice. And that suits me fine. And you meet up with Vincent. And you march on. And five minutes after, the dog stops. But it stops outside what looks like a normal... Just a normal residential area. And it turns around and, and looks up at you and just wags its tail. This is where this is where it leads? This do you do you smell him? Is he around here? The dog box. And I give him a treat. There you go. Is he in in here, in the uh, in one of the houses? Does any of you have anything in streetwise? Yeah, I got two. Okay. So you know that some of these kindred clubs, or some of some of these clubs that are kind of known for being a little outside of the law, are often concealed uh, behind what looks like normal residential areas or normal houses. I bite my lip as I kind of think about this. Eh, I get it. Okay, maybe one of these ones. And I, I look around to see any signs, any markings, uh, or any door that is maybe a stair down or something like that. You do see there is a stair down to a basement where there are curtains in front of a glass door. Which is kind of unusual. Oh. Any people around? You don't see anyone. I'd uh, look towards the other two. What about that? Hmm. Well, I suggest that we practice some breaking and entering, maybe a home invasion from a few different points of entry. Hmm. Well, yes, that could work, but there's also always trying the front door first, Dolph. I don't Hmm. mind going down the stairs. Well, again, I I very much favour taking a stealthy approach. I don't particularly want to just walk in through the front door. Um, But if you want to take the front door, you go right ahead. I'm quite used to sliding in through windows to feed, so this is my bread and butter, as they say. 
All right, all right. Now I see your point. So, what about you, Alan? What do you think? Well, I, uh... Ooh, and I try to uh, think clearly, but I find uh, my mind is a little bit clouded because I'm getting quite hungry. Um, well, I can... Uh, I like uh, the stealthy approach. Yeah, I like the stealthy approach. Well, how about this, then? I'll wait a few minutes. You two start finding your way in, and then I'll do the front door, draw attention to myself. Uh, if you two... I'll feel much more confident if I know that you two are waiting in the wings, so to speak. Yes, of course. I, we wouldn't leave you to face the beast by yourself, Vince. It's actually very reassuring, Dolph. Thank you. All right. So, what is your plan of action? Vincent is going to wait a little bit to let the other two make their more subtle entrances if they can, but he will try and go for this main entrance. Yeah, and um, I'll either enter through the same way as uh, Dolphin is, or if we, uh, as we move around the building, if we find two separate entrances maybe we'll take both of those i'll move around the building is there a side entrance uh, or a fire escape or something like that there is a fire escape and now that you're looking at it there's something about that fire escape you've seen before maybe yeah odd for a fire escape to be familiar um hmm Okay, well, at least there is one. That means we can uh, climb in through an emergency exit, or I can. Are you coming with me, Alan, or are you going to keep looking? Um, I mean, no. Uh, you, I mean, if he's going down, don't you think it's on the basement level? True, but I, I don't know. I just feel like if we all enter via the same entrance we can all be eliminated in the same way but I'm no strate strategist if you feel like we should all go through the front door Alan I defer to your better judgment no 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 let's 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 take the fire ladder I don't intend to climb up to the roof Alan no we'll see if we find I mean there better be some something that's open or else we'll just stand out there like fools <laughs> yes well we wouldn't want that would we no uh, I go up a flight of stairs on the fire escape. Is the emergency door unlocked? It is. Wonderful. And as soon as you open the door, you do hear a l vague pumping of music. Music that, again, it gives you kind of a, a flashback to something. You've, you've heard at least this kind of music before, or you've heard this style before. What kind of music is it? It's a uh, right now you can you hear it's a loud thumping, um, but there's something about the rhythm of the music that that kind of it's recognizable for you. It's very unique. Hmm. Now, bizarre. Uh, well, I will lead on. All right, you are on the first floor then. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. you come to a hallway. And the hallway is just, there's nothing in it, it's just concrete, uh, nothing special. And there is a door um, that I assume you're going to try and get in through. I will try the door handle. It does open, and it leads you into what looks like a back room for almost a kitchen or something. It's a storage room with lots of cocktail glasses, lots of boxes piled on top of one another, lots of spare chairs. Oh, Alan, you know, this is one of these uh, block parties, isn't it? It's a club in an apartment complex. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've heard about. I go up to one of the chairs and having thrown away my uh, well, the bit of fence that I had previously, I'm, I'm gonna try and follow the sheriff's example and see if I can break something off. Okay, so you're going to try and break a leg of a chair off? It depends on how how quiet it is around me. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if it's kind of quiet, I don't want to make that noise. Otherwise, I'll just... Uh, well, there is the music, and you can hear people speaking faintly in the other side of the door. 
Okay, well if I can hear them speaking then they might very well hear a crash of a chair possibly flinging. So I, I kind of just feel the leg and I probably notice that it's, well, it's like a chair. It's made to be held together. Uh, and but luckily for you, this chair you have right here it actually looks to be in a bit of a disarray. Maybe it's maybe that's the reason why it's been put there because it needs fixing or they need to throw it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I hesitate for a bit, then I start sort of wriggling the leg, and it pops up quite easily. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplay, where we played the chronicle The Sacrifice from Chicago by Night for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Chicago by Night is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing, and Vampire the Masquerade is published by Modifius. Our storyteller was Clara Horsher Herbal, and we were also joined by the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins. Check them out on social media and on their Patreons to support their work in the tabletop space. The intro was composed for us by the amazing Simon Kelle, and he's also provided all of the music for this chronicle. Check out his work over on simonkolle.com. Sound effects are created by the fine folks at freesound.org and Sirenscape. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, and David, for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons, Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Vanity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with Yelmer and Craig. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you so much for listening, and see you soon again.